loss affects millions of Americans and not just senior citizens. Hi, this is Nancy Hornback reporting from Melville, New York. I'm standing outside of Island Better Hearing where I had the opportunity to meet with owner and audiologist Lori Trenicost. Lori's passion for her patients was evident as she described her business and the products and services she offers to those who suffer from hearing loss. Well, Island Better Hearing is a family owned business started by my father in 1968. I'm a licensed certified audiologist and I joined the practice in 1986 and together we um, have been um, diagnosing hearing loss, we've been um, educating the public as well as our patients, rehabilitating hearing loss and then counseling the patients on what their options are as far as the next step from assistive devices to assistive technology to hearing aids. What services do you offer? We perform diagnostic, diagnostic hearing evaluations, at which point we evaluate a, a particular client on a referral either from their medical physician or from a friend um, because they're having some difficulty either hearing or communicating or understanding. And we perform a range of testing that gives us insight into the level of hearing, a person's capability for discriminating speech and then make a recommendation based on those test results for what's to follow, whether it be follow up with a physician or an evaluation to determine appropriate hearing aids or assistive technology like a particular phone or um, an assistive device for the television or something along those lines. What products are available to help those with hearing loss? This particular piece of equipment is called a sonic alert. It's used to um, aid a hearing impaired individual to wake up. What happens is you set the clock and it's coupled to a bed vibrator or a pillow vibrator. This happens to be a pillow vibrator. And this fits underneath the pillow so that when the alarm clock is set to go off, the clock goes off, it vibrates under the pillow and the patient is able to wake up without actually hearing the alarm. So they're actually feeling it rather than hearing it. This is a teletalker. It's a type of phone for the hearing impaired and the visually impaired. It actually has two functions. The numbers are very large because some of our patients are not only hearing impaired but visually impaired. And it has a light indicator so that the patient knows when the phone is ringing. Um, and it also, when the patient picks up the phone, it has the capability of raising the voice on the other end from the receiver so that the hearing impaired patient can adjust it to the level that they need based on their hearing loss. Some of the different hearing aids that we're fitting now to our patients after we do the testing and we make a recommendation for hearing aids, we're fitting several types of aids. One type of hearing aid is called an over-the-ear hearing aid. It fits directly over the patient's ear and it couples to an ear mold in the ear. The circuit within the hearing aid is what helps to determine the optimal benefit a particular patient will get. So the hearing aid can look like an over-the-ear hearing aid and be a digital circuit, or it can be one of those completely in the canal hearing aids that nobody sees and still be a digital circuit. Complete the same task, only look different. What is oral rehabilitation therapy? That's a particular therapy that we use with hearing impaired um, individuals to help to um, facilitate the introduction of sound from the hearing aid into the processing system. So what that basically helps them to do is learn to differentiate and discriminate certain sounds of speech and also to learn to discriminate those sounds of speech within a, an unsatisfactory listening environment like noise at a wedding or noise in a school setting um, or in the mall or in a situation where it's very difficult to process speech. Kimberly was um, referred to us through Suffolk County Early Intervention. We did a hearing test on her initially and um, diagnosed a high frequency hearing loss. We um, recommended hearing aids. We got authorization through the county and medical clearance from her doctor. Today we saw her for a follow-up and we actually fitted hearing aids to her with the custom ear molds, instructed her mom um, on how to use them, insert batteries, take care of them, and when Kimberly should use them. And then we'll see her again in two to four weeks to do a fitting with her FM um, and also to do what we call an aided audiogram, which is the beginnings of understanding how she actually performs with the hearing aids. We are patients, well my daughter is a patient here at Island Better Hearing and has been for uh, about six years or actually five years now 
and um, we're very pleased with coming with to Lori. And uh, it's been it was a tough road in the very beginning because Sabrina's a very spirited child. So, but she's come along nicely, and uh, you know when she has her appointments, she she does very well. Sabrina wears bilateral hearing aids, and um, at this point right now, we found that the hearing aids are doing a good job. But because she is having a hard time discriminating with phonetics, um, her her ability to really hear things is, has, has become limited with the hearing aids, and so now she's going to be getting a cochlear implant. What are cochlear implants? Well, cochlear implants are surgically implanted devices for people with hearing loss when hearing aids no longer help. Um, what we do is we work with the physicians and the facilities that do the surgery, and we do the follow-up care with the children and adults that receive implants. What sets you apart from your competitors? I'd say the biggest thing is the service in this office. We're very family oriented. Um, we get to know our clients and our patients as far as their needs, not only for the testing that we do, but also for follow-up. We've gone to certain facilities to visit them when they're in rehab situations. Um, we've gone to schools to take care of our student patients because they're not able to get to the office. We also have certain elderly patients that are not able to get out that we've known for many, many years, some of which have known me since I'm in high school and college. And I've seen them at their homes and also at the nursing homes that they're in to take care of them so that they're comfortable. How often should someone get their hearing tested? My feeling for an adult is one time per year, unless we know that there's an internal problem like um, middle ear problems or some kind of medical problem that we need to follow them more. But quite honestly, it's recommended one time per year. You're going to give me a hearing test in a few minutes. Tell me what I should expect. Well, we're going to take you into the room and we're going to check your ears and then we're going to put earphones on you and have you listen to certain sounds and pitches and loudnesses and then we're going to graph your reactions to those sounds and tell you what your hearing levels are. Tell me the word for, from, to, ten, if, on, bin. I got a clean bill of health, but should I suffer from hearing loss in the future? I know that Lori Trenicost and Island Better Hearing are here to diagnose, educate, rehabilitate, counsel, and provide the best assistive technological devices available. I'm Nancy Hornbeck reporting for Close Up on America's Business.